Well, good afternoon, and thank you so much for joining us on our first LinkedIn livecast. My name is Amit Shah. I'm the Chief Medical Officer for Clear Medical, and I'll be talking to you today about thoracic irrigation for hemothorax management, and specifically the use of Clear. We'll start out by discussing the problem. What we know from really the best quality data that we have out there, uh, the East multi stunter study that was published in 2020, is that with standard chest tube management, of hemothorax, almost 30% of patients end up with retained collections. And that is the average. If you take into consideration um, patients that have over 300 cc's of blood with the initial hemothorax, that number is actually higher, closer to 40%. These patients end up staying in the hospital for an additional week, three more days in the ICU, higher pneumonia rates, higher rates of mechanical ventilation, and the majority of these patients will end up with uh, a need for a second intervention. We also know that hospital costs associated with a second intervention, whether they be lytics or vats, or even a second chest tube, they'll increase when a secondary intervention is required um, to the tune to about, of about $10,000 if it's vats uh, or lytics. And that cost simply goes up when multiple interventions are required. So it is a sizable problem, a high impact problem. We also know that uh, simply irrigating the chest with warm saline prevents retaining hemothorax by facilitating drainage. And this data started coming out in 2016 uh, out of Milwaukee in the Medical College of Wisconsin. And they were able to demonstrate that, again, simply irrigating with warm saline at the time of chest tube placement lowered the odds of requiring a second intervention by 84%. And in absolute numbers, their rate of actionable retained hemothorax dropped from about 22% to 5.5%. Then in 2022, the University of Nevada group out of Vegas uh, described their experience with thoracic irrigation, showing that, again, simple warm saline irrigation at the time of chest tube placement decreased their length of stay by four days and decreased their average hospital charges by almost $90,000. Then in January and February of this year at the East and West uh, Society meetings, there were two more study results unveiled. Uh, at East in January, Milwaukee described their five-year experience. And again, here are all of the metrics that you'd be of interest, that would be of interest, including the rate of retaining thorax, the need for VATs, chest tube duration, hospital in the state, all of those were better with irrigation when compared to the group that was not irrigated. This study was just published in Journal Trauma in the last couple of weeks. At Western Trauma, the multi-center study results were reported. This was an 11 center study, a prospective study, and again here, the secondary intervention rate and the ICU length of stay were less. So a sizable problem, a big problem, and a fairly simple solution. I should point out also that uh, Western Trauma Association's hemothorax management algorithm does cite pleural lavage or thoracic irrigation uh, as part of the treatment plan. So this is not experimental. Uh, it is part of a major trauma society's uh, guideline and algorithm. So you might then ask, why isn't irrigation being routinely performed? And I think the answer is that before CLEAR was made available, it was a time intensive and somewhat messy process to be irrigating oftentimes using a Yankauer suction catheter, sticking it directly into the chest or into the chest tube, uh, and using a syringe uh, as a funnel to pour saline into the chest wound or the chest tube itself, and then repeating that process. And that's specifically why we developed the clear irrigator, so that you can attach directly to a bag of warm saline and directly to a suction canister um, and irrigate and suck directly into the chest tube. So what you'll see here is the handpiece with the labels A, B, and C. Uh, the nozzle is designed to attach to any pigtail or chest tube that mates with a standard pleurovac connection. Otherwise, it is designed to look and function like the suction irrigators you use in the operating room for laparoscopy uh, with the blue button for irrigation, the red button for suction. And there are a couple notable exceptions in terms of the design. We have optimized it not only for attaching to chest tubes and pigtails, but also these are wide straight channels um, that prevent clogging. So that's a key difference. 
when compared to the second irrigators you use uh, in the OR. The second component of the system is the clear port. And we designed this port for repeated pleural access. And the port is designed to stay with the chest tube or pigtail for the life of the catheter um, and stay in line with both the chest tube and the pleura back. With access to the pleural cavity provided by this removable cap that's labeled three in this picture. So the top image here shows how the port looks when it is in line with the chest tube and the atrium. If the cap is in place, there is flow from the pleural cavity directly into the atrium as per normal. And when you want to access the pleural cavity, you simply remove that cap and dock a fresh irrigator to allow suction and irrigation of the pleural space. I should say that docking the irrigator cuts off flow to the pleura back. So it allows you to, again, directly irrigate and, and suction the pleural space uh, as needed. The third and last component of the system is our port injector, which is designed to mate with a standard lower lock syringe. And again, by accessing the port, by docking through the port, it cuts off flow to the pleura back and allows you to pull fluid for sampling and inject fluid and medication, for example, uh, with lytic therapy. I'll just quickly detail a study that was completed uh, late last year with CLEAR. This was a study funded by the Department of Defense, and we were looking specifically at the odds of requiring a secondary intervention for retained hemothorax, whether it be chest tube, second chest tube, lytics, or VATS. And what we showed was that the odds of requiring that secondary intervention were 80% lower in the clear irrigated group when compared to the non-irrigated group. Very few VATs were required. And in the 100 plus patients that were irrigated, there were no safety events, no increased bleeding, no increased infection, uh, very safe and well-tolerated procedure. There were two fewer chest tube days in the irrigated group. And because the group in Milwaukee had been And Uh, and the recent publication East, there have been multiple other publications and presentations this year already uh, about thoracic irrigation, just showing how top of mind this problem is. Uh, one in JAMA surgery, uh, talking about thoracic irrigation with another in uh, And in that latter study, the authors are, uh, can be quoted as describing the value of clear, the clear irrigator in particular as a more ergonomic option um, that more effectively agitates and, and dilutes uh, the hemothorax and inhibiting uh, coagulation. In the last month, there was a Behind the Knife podcast episode dedicated to the Western Trauma Association's uh, meeting highlights. Again, here, uh, thoracic irrigation was uh, featured and spotlighted and the trauma medical director out of University Medical Center in New Orleans specifically talked about CLEAR as being a device that they loved using and um, a device that was uh, responsible for decreasing the number of VATS procedures that were required. Later in June of this year at the Surgical Infection Society meeting, uh, Grady will be detailing their six month experience with CLEAR, which has also been very positive. I think I'll take a moment now to show you what uh, irrigation looks like with CLEAR. Now, this video is taken in the trauma bay in an awake patient, and I'll ask you to focus on the clots coming out, which it's hard to imagine how they might come out in any other way. So first, you'll see the surgeon irrigating by pushing the blue button. Stay awake for me, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. All right, suck it up. Switching now to suction. Again, pay special attention to the clock. Okay. 
spots out there. Good. Okay. So again, a well tolerated yeah, procedure ready? in this awake patient. That's good. Man. I think now I'll spend the last few minutes of uh, this live cast discussing a few cases just to show you um, the flexibility really of the clear system. These first few cases are out of, out of Grady in courtesy of Dr. Jason Shreda, who has no financial ties to clear whatsoever. I don't have to tell you that uh, Grady is a very busy place. Um, one of the uh, highest volume trauma centers in the country. The first case uh, is a patient who was shot in the right mid back, a 23 year old gentleman. The vital signs are as shown here. An extended fast exam was performed and a right hemothorax was identified. The first chest X-ray showed a near complete whiteout of that right hemithorax and an apical chest tube was placed with an improvement, but not quite clearing of that hemothorax. I still see that haze. A CAT scan was performed to get a better appreciation of the patient's injuries. And among the variety of injuries, I'll have you pay attention specifically to the retained collection with the chest tube sitting directly in the collection on that right side. The patient was taken to the operating room to manage the intra-abdominal uh, injuries. And while they were there, they chose to irrigate through the chest tube using the clear irrigator. Here again, you can see the clots being removed. Uh, the surgeon has the advantage of being able to manipulate the chest tube that has not yet been sewn in to uh, reach a greater expanse of the pleural cavity. He's also communicating with the anesthesiologist for uh, to change the bed positioning so he can, again, access a greater expansive that pleural cavity, they're able to pull out another 450 cc's of blood through irrigation. And this is the post-irrigation chest x-ray. You can see uh, clear uh, costophrenic ang angles. Um, and uh, the patient then is transferred to the ward uh, six days later, the chest tube is removed and thereafter quickly discharged. So if we look at the chest x-rays by, side by side, you'll see the initial chest x-ray with the complete whiteout of the right side, slight improvement after chest tube placement, and then finally after irrigation, uh, a complete clearing of that right hemithorax. An initial 450 cc's pulled out that would have otherwise uh, re remained in the thoracic cavity. Case number two is one of delayed irrigation. It's a 72 year old gentleman who's transferred in from an outside facility He's got left-sided rib fractures and a pneumothorax, but no hemothorax. The patient is needle decompressed in flight, and this first chest x-ray taken at Grady, you can see the needle decompression catheter. They remove the catheter and place a 14 French pigtail and admit the patient to the SICU. Uh, a CAT scan is performed. They actually identify a pulmonary embolus as well, and they start the patient on a heparin drip. Soon thereafter, the pigtail is removed, but a few days later, they find a new hemothorax, likely result of the rib fractures and the anticoagulation. And here's what it looks like on CAT scan. You see a sizable collection on that left side. They chose to place a new catheter and irrigate. They irrigated with a total volume of 1,000 cc's and got another 850 cc's of blood out. Soon thereafter, they're able to remove the chest tube uh, and discharge the patient. And they see this as a success as they were able to avoid a VATS uh, in an elderly patient. Last case out of Grady is a 39-year-old gentleman um, who developed an empyema. And this will be uh, an example of irrigation used for empyema management. So he was originally shot in the left thigh. He arrested and had a resuscitative thoracotomy, taken to the operating room uh, for a common femoral artery repair and common femoral vein common femoral vein ligation, had a fasciotomy and a temporary closure of the left chest. They also placed a right-sided chest tube. His post-operative course was very complicated. And on day 21, they identified a right-sided empyema. Given how sick he was, they chose to do medical management only. 
and they discharged the patient at hospital day number 27. He returned six weeks later, having completed his discharge antibiotics, but with cough and night sweats and chills. And this is his chest x-ray when he returned. You see this large collection on the right. Um, and you can see the apical chest tube being placed uh, on the second chest x-ray. And here is the CAT scan showing this very large rim enhancing collection. They placed the pigtail uh, in that collection and then irrigated through the pigtail. Got 300 cc's of purulence out uh, and avoided lytics, uh, avoided the operating room and was able to, they were able to discharge the patient on hospital day number six. So a successful use of irrigation for managing empyema. Also a couple images courtesy of our colleague at Mass General, Dr. Kerr, uh, interventional pulmonologist, again, with no financial ties to clear. He sent me these images before and after. It's a thick gelatinous collection that wasn't draining on the left side. And he was able to uh, nearly completely resolve um, the collection with uh, clear facilitated irrigation. The patient did not require any other interventions. So just to review, uh, we've talked about preventing retained hemothorax by facilitating hemothorax uh, drainage with a thoracic irrigation or clear facilitated irrigation. And that's to be done uh, at or near the time of chest tube placement. We've also talked about and shown you examples of treating retained collections, whether they be retained hemothorax or empyema with irrigation. We're also hearing reports from our centers of clear facilitated irrigation being added to lytic installation after the dwell period to add some mechanical agitation after uh, the lytic dwell and having some success with that. We've heard reports from a couple centers of uh, clear being used to actively rewarm patients. Again, you're using warm saline, you get rapid core rewarming. And finally, we've heard of irrigation being used to clear gastric contents, uh, food from the uh, thoracic cavity in patients who have uh, stomach and diaphragmatic trauma. So I'll stop there. Uh, you do have the ability to ask questions uh, and make comments uh, through LinkedIn Live. Um, so I will pause now to see if there are questions I can answer. Um, meanwhile, I have provided my contact information. Please feel free to email or call or text me at any time with questions. If you want to try clear, simply scan the QR code. Uh, and I'll just pa pause for a moment to see if there are questions that I can answer. One of the common questions we do get asked that might as well detail to you uh, is what exactly is the protocol for irrigation? And what's been published on most extensively is waves of 500, sal 500 cc's of warm saline. So suction initially, 500 cc's of warm saline, suction again, and you repeat that cycle until the effluent has cleared at least 1,000 cc's. Uh, the UNLV study showed that less than 1,000 cc's was less efficacious, uh, but you cycle through those 500 cc um, uh, cycles, and generally two liters is sufficient um, to manage hemothorax, unless of course you have active ongoing bleeding. Okay, I think we are at sort of the tail end of our, our time here. I uh, don't see any other questions popping up. I appreciate your joining. And I also wanna um, thank those who will be watching uh, after uh, uh, the video has ended. Thank you. And we look forward to hearing from you.